السلام علیکم ناظرین میں ہوں امبرین پرویز این ایل پی ٹرینر این ایل سکسیس کوچ اور میں ہوں ہنا جنے جو این آئی ایم 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 آج ناظرین ہمارے ساتھ سہیلی کے سیٹ پر موجود ہیں ازر قیوم صاحب جو کہ منٹ کے ریجنل مینجر ہیں منٹ سٹانڈز فور مسلم انگیجمنٹ اور ڈیویلپمنٹ تو اس سے پریٹی مچ ہمیں ظاہر ہوتا ہے کہ جو منٹ آرگنائزیشن ہے وہ مسلمانوں کی کمیونٹی کو انگیج کرنے کے لیے اور ڈیویلپ کرنے کے لیے انیشیٹیوز لیتی ہے تو اس حوالے سے مزید معلومات حاصل کرنے کے لیے ہم ازر بھائی سے گفتو کریں گے اسلام علیکم ازر بھائی وآلیکم سلام ورحمت اللہ کیسے ازر بھائی آجا الحمدللہ الحمدللہ ویلکم آن بورڈ ازر بھائی سو وی نو دیٹ یو ورک ویڈ منٹ مائی فرس کوئیشن ویڈ یو ووڈ بی Would you be able to, you know, just briefly tell us about uh, the different initiatives that MENT takes place, specifically with relation to, you know, supporting um, Muslim, engage, Muslim women engagement, um, supporting the reverts, and then there's a lot, of, you know, going on reference to Islamophobia as well. So I know it's a huge question, uh, a lot of scope, but yeah, if you'd be able to explain that, please. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <coughs> MEND, as you said, is Muslim engagement and development. Yeah. And a lot of our work is around um, engaging the Muslim community and upskilling the community in politics and in media, especially in those mm. two areas. Mm. Um, and we do do a lot of work with the Muslim women and engagement of Muslim women and again, upskilling of Muslim women and ensuring that the narratives around Muslim women are not as skewed as they currently are. Yeah, mm. yeah, very important. Um, mm. It's really important mm. because, uh, I mean, there's a, uh, th- th- there's a nice uh, uh, um, uh, poem going around at the moment mm. by the brown hijabi, if uh, mm. any of you have a look at it. Yeah. Where, mm. and, uh, and she's got a number of poetry where she says things along the lines of, I'm not going to repeat the poetry, I'm right. not up to the standard, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but along the lines of like, you know, you, you uh, with Muslim in relation to Muslim women, you want us to be seen, yeah. i.e. you don't want our, you want our hijab off and you want us to be, yeah. you know, yeah. to be, yeah. but then when we're seen, as in when we come forward yeah. and, you know, when we take part and we become active, yeah. then you want us out of the way because, yeah. you know, this is entryism by yeah. extremists. Yeah. Yeah. It's also you know, like, these sort of narratives. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. also like, now my experience is that when I started wearing hijab, somehow I was like, I wasn't, the same person. It was more like kind of, okay, you are wearing hijab, now you are not one of us. It's like us and them all the way. Mm. And I really like the fact that they they say that they want to know more about us. They want to like kind of um, lift us up. But when we start talking, and if we talk about our values and we stand out, it's more like you are brainwashed. Mm. Yeah. What's your experience yeah. I mean, with that? This is the type of thing, I and mean, we'll come to Mend in a bit, but yeah. this, is, this is good because yeah. actually these are the sort of narratives which, yeah. which yeah. the Muslim community is framed around. Yeah. So if, if, you are, um, if, you, if you put yourself to one side hmm. and you don't get involved in the public sphere, hmm. then we are uh, accused of uh, being uh, like ghettoized yeah. and excluding yeah. ourselves yeah. and not being involved in society. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But if you become involved in society and you become politically aware and yeah. you become involved in the media and politics and stuff, suddenly there's talk about entryism. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? And these people, they're trying to take over. Yeah. Yeah? So, you know, you had the whole Trojan horse schools yeah. thing in, yeah. in Birmingham yeah. where you had many Muslims who advanced themselves and became headmasters and deputy headmasters yeah. and the head of departments in schools yeah. and stuff in Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. And this was at one point seen as, oh my God, these Muslims are taking over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they were removed. Yeah. It's you more know? like yeah. Yeah. a fear you know? in the society. Yeah. And, yeah. and, th- and yeah. this is the thing. So uh, this is, w- w- MEND is about ensuring that the narratives around Muslims are fair and yeah. just. We're not asking for something extra. You know, yeah. We're not asking for something that anyone else doesn't have. Look, just have fair narratives around Islam and Muslims. Tell the truth. Yeah. Um, let Muslims tell their own stories. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, Let them be in the media. Let Muslims represent themselves in mm. politics mm. rather than necessarily always being repre- represented by others. Yeah. And mm. in terms of, you know, you asked the question uh, about Muslim women and uh, about reverts and all of yeah. these sort of things. So here in Birmingham and throughout the country, uh, men does a lot of work with Muslim women. So mm. recently we had in International Women's Day. Yeah. Up and down the country as an organization, yeah. we held events with Muslim women on mm. Muslim on, on International Women's Day. Mm. Uh, here in Birmingham, 
we had a really nice event, uh, which you yourself <laughs> spoke at, actually, uh, al alongside as, as a life coach and yeah. uh, uh, alongside uh, Salma Yaqub, a yeah. political activist. Yeah. Yeah. And we had Rose Brown yeah. uh, from the Unison Union yeah. who came and spoke as well. Uh, and it was a yeah. really nice event mm. uh, showcasing Muslim women and non-Muslim women yeah. in that Rose mm. was there as well and showing how women are making it in society yeah. despite all of the barriers and yeah. these things. Yeah. Um, and that was nice. And then there was a little meal at the end and stuff. Yeah, it was a, uh, event, it was a yeah. ni nice event. So we, we and, and we've previously had uh, a number of events, for example, where we've asked Muslim, because unfortunately, when it comes to hate crime, yeah. Muslim women are disproportionately affected yeah. Uh, yeah. because once they can be, um, uh, uh, they can be evident, uh, spotted, spotted right as Muslim, because a lot of women wearing hijab, so yeah. it can be seen that they're women. Yeah. And secondly, because a lot of these people who do hate crimes, they're essentially they're chickens. Yeah. Uh, and they see a woman as a softer target, oh, and yeah. unfortunately. Mm. Uh, so they might see a woman alone somewhere and, and attack her mm. whereas yeah. if they saw a larger man they might not be as inclined to at 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 attack yeah, him yeah, as, as, yeah. as it were so unfortunately Muslim women are disproportionately mm. uh, um, the victims of, yeah, of, 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 of hate crime. Um, so we do a, n a number of events. Uh, so, for example, we had in Walsall a, li a little while back uh, a, an event where we asked women to come to the event, and it was mm -hmm. a women's only event held by our then head of uh, Islamophobia Response Unit that we mm -hmm. have within the organization, yeah. Huma. Um, where, where they were not just yeah. only awareness, but come to report yeah. oh, okay. the, 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 okay. the incidences that are, that had occurred with them as well, and to talk to each other mm. yeah. about the sort of you know experiences that yeah. that mm. they had had and mm. and and these these type of things. So, and we do a lot of that that yeah. that, that type of work, awareness, uh, you know, upskilling. Um, we hold media and politics masterclasses, yeah. mm. which last for four hours each. Yeah. Uh, we hold them for free. We don't ever charge for our, for yeah. our, for our programs. Yeah. Yeah. And we hold them across the country yeah. in mosques, in Islamic then, centers, at women's centers, yeah. so yeah. that people learn those skills to yeah. be able to tackle the media and yeah. engage with the media Absolutely. and to be able to become more politically aware, lobby better, these yeah. type yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've attended your Causes and Cures workshop, yeah. and that was my first experience of interacting with men. And after that, I feel that, you know, it, it, it was so comprehensive comprehensive and light, you know, light at the same time, mm. that it has given me a deeper insight into all the, you know, things that you were discussing about earlier. And I was completely like at a, at a platform <coughs> or at a level whereby I had no clue whatsoever of what Islamophobia really meant. Mm. And I couldn't even identify, like, for example, I'm driving down on the roads and then, you know, somebody would just for, for no reason, try to have a road rage with me, try yeah. to have a race against me, mm. try to honk the, you know, um, horn at me. I wouldn't realize why that's happening. But then, you know, over the period, especially after I attended your CNC, I realized that maybe this does have a link with Islamophobia, you know, because if they see some woman wearing a hijab and driving and, you know, fearlessly out there on the road, as I am myself, yeah. they would try to target you. They wouldn't yeah. fathom the fact that how has this, you know, person uh, even got the right to you know be on the roads for that matter yeah. so yeah. I couldn't you know it was very difficult for me to initially identify whether this can be you know uh, categorized as um, a lighter form of Islamophobia mm. or not uh, or maybe it's just one of those things whereby you know because I'm a woman uh, I'm being victimized by some you know male so what do you think then uh, Azabhai how can anybody identify you know different forms of Islamophobia if you like Okay. I mean, <coughs> firstly, I, and we were speaking earlier about this yeah. as well, yeah. I think it's important to define hmm. what, what is what Islamophobia, Islamophobia, what Islamophobia yeah, yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And we tend to work with uh, the type of definition that, gives, uh, that comes in three parts. Mm. So, firstly, what does Islamophobia generally look like? Mm. Uh, you know, what is it? So, Islamophobia is an irrational, exaggerated fear of Islam and Muslims. Mm. Belkul, fear belkul. and hatred of Islam and belkul, Muslims. Yeah. Irrational and exaggerated. Mm. Yeah. Um, so... And, and we say Islam and Muslims. You know, mm, some yeah. people try to seclude it to a hate of Islam or a fear of, uh, sorry, a hate of Muslims or a fear of Muslims. Mm. Actually, it's an irrational fear and hatred of Islam and Muslims. Mm. Because, look, people can critique Islam, the religion, no problem. You know, they can yeah. criticize it. Non if, if people are non-Muslims, that means they don't believe in the religion. Yeah. So, of course, they have critique and criticism, and this will carry on through time. It's not mm, an issue. Yeah. It's not a problem. Mm, yeah. Any religion can be criticized, can be debated, can be discussed, and these things. It's hate that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why would anybody have hate for a world religion? Yeah. And that hate, and a lot of research has shown that the hate of Islam then translates into hate of Muslims and mm. attacks on Muslims. Yeah. So this irrational, exaggerated hate and fear of Islam and Muslims, mm. um, which is 
Uh, then we look at where it comes from, which yeah. is perpetuated by negative stereotypes. Negative. Sahih. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Sahih. And I, like mm. no, when I wrote my uh, master thesis, yeah. is I also touch up on the media because yeah. media, when they write about mis Muslims, is very negative. Yeah. It's mm. like if mm. a Muslim uh, do something bad, it's m like Muslim terrorism, radicalism, mm. fundamentalism. Mm. But if a white person do the same act, it's more like lonely wolf. You feel mm. a kind of sympathy, yeah. and you read mm. the media. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The news, it's mm. like no sympathy, and media got mm. a lot of power because it's one way communication. Mm. You mm. sit there, and the media will, yeah, you know, Pointing through a lot yeah. of yeah. the information. And mm. just mm. think about those people who don't interact with mm. Muslims, they mm. are just sitting there listening to Absorbing the media, getting everything from yeah. the media. And when they see a Muslim woman wearing hijab, they see that maybe as a target. Mm. Not all of them, obviously, but some of them. Mm. I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. And uh, the majority of British Muslims, for example, yeah. um, live in uh, just a few cities in the UK. Mm. So Birmingham, yeah. Bradford, Manchester, yeah. London. Um, and they live in just a few areas of those cities. Yeah. We make up less than 5% of the population of this country. 80% mm, yeah. mm. of white people live in what can be described as white ghettos in this mm, country, yeah. i.e. Mm. they live in white only areas. Yeah. Mm. So they will not come in day-to-day -day contact with ethnic minorities in general, yeah. Yeah. and specifically Muslims. Yeah. So their news that most people in the British uh, population uh, get about Islam and Muslims won't be from the day-to-day -day interaction with mm. real Muslims. Yeah. 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 It's going to come from the media. Yeah. Yeah. So then, what the media yeah. feeds mm. Mm. is very important. Yeah. And this yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, Polish, Albanian, mm. Romanian, yeah. Bulgarian, Czech immigration. Mm. Birmingham is a city that's been built on immigration. Mm. And when you look at the city and where people are, what happens is new immigrants, when they come to Birmingham, they come to the center or the areas of Birmingham. Why? The houses are smaller, they're cheaper. Yeah. Um, the, it's easily accessible to jobs in the, within mm, the city mm, center mm. and within the factory areas, yeah. and so and 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 because they f because these areas are normally you know have have not had issues with racism and things mm, like this. Yeah. Mm. But what happens as those communities uh, come, they settle, they become wealthier, mm. they want to move out to the nicer, bigger houses. Yeah, you absolutely. know, they want to go to Mosley and they want to go to Edgebaston, yeah. they want to go to Hansworth yeah, Wood, and they want absolutely. to go to Solihull, and they want to, you know, yeah. just like the previous. So what happened was the previous white population in the inner city made up of Irish and other immigrants previously, and people who are here for, for longer term, as they moved out, when new immigrants came in, they filled those, those, those bases. Now, this was debated about 10 years ago, and I said to people at the time, watch, when the next non-Muslim or non-Asian or black or, uh, immigration comes, they will take over these areas. Mm. Yeah. And I'll give you two examples. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Vincent Green and Bordesley Green. Right. Two predominantly Asian areas previously yeah. now are mostly, you know, black and Hans Hansworth to some extent as well, yeah. are now Romanians and Bulgarians, white, yeah. Christian, Europeans, yeah. living in those areas, yeah. who moved into areas. And what's happened to those Pakistanis and Bengalis who lived in those mm. areas? They moved out. They moved on, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. So the, Musl the Muslim population of Bordesley Green, for example, most of them have moved on to Stetchford, to Hodge Hill, and yeah. to those yeah. areas. Yeah. Yeah. And now what's happened is new immigration. So, you know, the fact that we have these ghettos and things like this, there is a reason for them. Yeah. Yeah. There are there are financial reasons for them. There are you know there are reasons to do with immigration. There are reasons to do with socio economic factors and things. Mm, it's yeah. not this. It's not that as a community we decided we're going to ghettoize ourselves yeah. from everybody yeah. else. But this is where we come into the yeah. negative stereotyping. Mm, yeah. mm, so if we mm. come back to the definition, mm, yeah. Islamophobia is this irrational, exaggerated fear and hatred of Islam and Muslims, yeah. perpetuated by negative stereotypes, mm. including in the media, yeah. including from politicians. Mm. When Bo you know when Boris Johnson talked about Muslim women who wear niqab and, yeah. talk and yeah. talked about bank robbers and letterboxes, mm, yeah. you know, those type of yeah. stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah. And then what we say is it results in something. Mm. Yeah. What does it result in? It results in marginalization of Muslims from civic, from public f life, from political life, yeah. from the media, from all these places. Yeah. So again, I give you the example of Trojan horse. Mm. You know, when that media narrative came in mm. that these Muslims are taking over, mm. they, they're going to indoctrinate yeah. children and yeah. these yeah. things. Yeah. What happened? It marginalized. So it removed 15 people, teachers mm. from the education system, yeah. mostly yeah. Muslim, yeah. got rid of them, dumped them. Yeah. They later won court cases and yeah. things and got those yeah. Yeah. bans revoked, yeah. but they never went back into teaching. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what happened? The Muslims get removed. Yeah. You get replaced by people who are maybe from outside of the area, yeah. maybe don't understand those children as well. Yeah. And now, four years later, you've got demonstrations on the streets of Birmingham at yeah. Parkfield and Anderton yeah. Park yeah. and other places. Why? Because the Muslim parents now feel they are disenfranchised. Yeah. 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 They yeah, feel absolutely. that previously teachers would listen to them, would talk to them, mm. would interact with mm. them, yeah. would make decisions collectively. Yeah. And now that they are having stuff forced on top of them. Mm. Yeah. So, so when you remove the Muslim voice mm. from yeah. the decision making, mm. Mm. what but happens is the decisions become very difficult for Muslims, mm. for, mm. The, for the Muslim community mm. to then, the mm. decisions that are made about them mm. yeah. and Bilkul. their children yeah. become Bilkul. very difficult for Bilkul. them Bilkul. to accept because they were never part of that Bilkul. process. Yeah. One of the things that we are promoting diversity and the other thing that we are promoting the same thing that we are doing is that we are cutting the parents of Muslims. It's important that when the parents will send their children to school, so this is their right that they want to keep up to date their children's progress. और फिर हर कल्चर का जो है वो एक अपनी लिमिटेशंस होती हैं तो बेस्ट होता है कि अगर आप किसी टीचर के पास चले जाएं कि जो कि आपके कल्चरल बैकग्राउंड को बिलोंग करता है या सेम रिलिजियस फेथ को भी अगर बिलोंग करता है तो वहां पे फिर एक एक कॉमन नैरेटिव आपके पास मौजूद हो हो जाता है ना जिसके हवाले से आप एक दूसरे के साथ रिलेट कर सकते हैं तो फिर आपकी कम्युनिकेशन के हवाले से आप थोड़े कंफर्टेबल हो जाते हैं बात करने के लिए अपने बच्चों के प्रोग्रेस के हवाले से पूछने के लिए बिल्कुल बिल्कुल आई थिंक द हिस्ट्री इज रिपीटिंग अगेन बिकॉज़ वन व्हाट हैपेंड आफ्टर वर्ल्ड वॉर लाइक नो सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर इज लाइक व्हाट हैपेंड विद ज्यूइश इज actually happening with the Muslims, but mm. not many people talk about that. Mm. That anti-Semitism was happening in the yeah. Islamophobia, now it's happening in the case of Islamophobia. Because the media had made an image of the Jewish people and had made this kind of things. Mm. 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 Many of the media images about Muslims 
are almost taken from the book of Goebbels, you know, mm. who did all the Nazi famous Nazi propagandists yeah. who did all this, this propaganda against the Jews uh, mm. before the Second World War. Mm. Very similar images are being produced in our media yeah. today about Muslims. But this right. time we are using um, the freedom of speech. That is they like, use yeah. Yeah. They, in in the 1930s, cool. people would say this is freedom of speech. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is all these yeah. things. Yeah. And a very, very similar argumentation. Yeah. But what happens is this is pushing and marginalizing communities. Yeah. Yeah. And what it then results in is that some people uh, see all of this and they decide that, you know what, let's take it further. Mm. Yeah. So you start getting violence yeah. against uh, Muslims. So I don't, uh, we had the famous story here uh, in Birmingham, really sad story, of uh, Uncle Muhammad Salim uh, from cool. Green Lane, cool. Christian, oh, yes. uh, who was murdered on the streets of Birmingham yes. by yes. Lapshin, mm. who is a person who flew into Birmingham mm. yeah. simply to commit terrorist atroci atrocities against the Muslim yeah. community here. Yeah. Mm. And this 82-year-old grandfather, mm. you know, yeah. minding his own yeah. business, coming home from Isha Salah, yeah. Yeah. and gets murdered in the streets yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. But one yeah. thing that a lot of people don't know, some people know that story, many people still unfortunately don't, is that actually the guy who did this also placed three bombs outside masjids around Birmingham. Wow, subhanAllah. A lot of people don't even mm. know that. Yeah. There yeah. Was one it's the first I time I'm hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. I visited Masjid Aisha in Walsall about two weeks ago and I gave a lecture there. Mm. One of the masjids that the bomb was placed outside was Masjid Aisha. Mm. And actually, this was the one that exploded, the one outside Masjid Aisha. Okay. Mm. Now, it was a nail bomb. It exploded. Alhamdulillah, nobody was there at the time, so it didn't injure mm -hmm. anyone. So a nail bomb is normally packed with nails. Yeah. When they explode, the nails go uh, everywhere. Can you imagine yeah. um, oh exploding gosh. nails yeah. and the damage that they yeah. could do? But Alhamdulillah, it didn't injure anyone. So I was in Masjid Aisha. Mm. There was an audience of over 100 people there. And I asked them if they knew about the story of Muhammad Salim. And one or two, three or four did. Yeah. Then I asked them about what else happened. Now they didn't know that 100 people in the masjid didn't know that their own masjid had been the, you know, had, had a bomb placed outside yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is again to do with media and not picking up the story, yeah. not mm, picking yeah. up the narrative. Yeah. Um, you know, when, it, when it's to do with Muslims and yeah. Islam and, and, yeah. and, 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 the, and these type of things. And this is one of the things that we as an organization do. Yeah. We do a lot of... Um, uh, stuff with media, we do a lot of stuff with putting out stories, positive engagement. With mm, the, there's there's mm. one thing is to complain when the media tells lies, but yeah, it's yeah. the positive engagement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we really go out there, find the journalists who are willing to engage with you positively and give them the positive stories. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every day of the week, Muslims are feeding the homeless in Birmingham City Centre. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Yeah? I saw one, uh, one uh, the, like, I think it was BBC do documentary yeah. that one uh, brother, he was like, you know, paying for other people because, and then he was explaining. It was such a beautiful story. He was like, "Can I pay for you?" And they were like, "Why?" They were like, "Because it's Ramadan and I'm mm. fasting. I want to, like, mm. you know, do an act sadaka. of." Yeah. These, yeah. these stories, yeah. are, these stories are not told. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 almost every Ramadan, uh, the, uh, uh, two or three or maybe four times in Ramadan with friends, normally eight or nine or ten mm. friends. We'll what we'll do is in the last ten nights after we've done uh, trawi and then Kiamul Layl, yeah. we'll yeah. go and uh, we finish Kiamul Layl. So maybe two or three times we'll go and we'll have suhoor. Yeah. At one of the restaurants on Ladypool yeah, Road, yeah. Um, just a few, a couple of years back, we went, and um, there was eight or nine of us, and there was other five or six other groups of eight or nine people, right. very similarly. Nobody's mm. eating at that yeah. time, mm. unless they've come from Kamal Lail from a masjid yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah similarly, yeah, yeah. and we ate. And uh, we go to pay, and they said, oh, no, the group that left before you paid for you. We don't know who they are. We didn't speak to them. We never met That's them before. That's the beauty you know? of Islam. This is the thing. That's the beauty. And yeah. then there was other people, so we paid for the next group. That's how the kind of going on. Yeah. Yeah. These are the stories about Islam yeah. that are not out there. Yeah. Yeah. Not being projected. Stories, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You so know? what can we as a Muslim do to have, like, no, so to do that this story can come out in the media. Yeah, I mean, um, I remember that uh, MEND had collaborated with the Tent Project just very recently, and you'd covered three nights, you know, uh, whereby people from all faith and no faith whatsoever came together under the same roof, and they took their own thoughts. So this was a great better initiative for MEND to collaborate. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so Alhamdulillah, the Ramadan Tent Project, Open Iftar, has been going on for a number of years, and uh, it's the second year in a row that we've actually uh, sponsored the, uh, mm. the, the event as well. Mm. We've been one of the, the key sponsors. 
and uh, we had a, a stall there and every night we spoke there hmm. and it was a beautiful project it was uh, uh, to balke mere khayal mein unhone bahut zyada behtar kar diya sorry aapko kaat rahi hu jo videos wagaira humne dekhi online aur jo tasveerein dekhi usme jo hai wo nasheed bhi unhone padhi hai aur open mic poetry jo hai wo bhi bachiyon ne aur bachon ne jo hai wo padhi hai phir mashallah it was bahar aap logo ne maidan ke andar garden ke andar jo hai wo namaz bhi पढ़ी है ओपन एयर उसके बाद आके बेहतरीन आप लोगों ने खाना भी खाया तो तो बड़ा खूबसूरत एक समा था Uh, on one night andrew smith the uh, interfaith advisor to mm. the bishop of birmingham was there mm. we had the so. representatives from st chad's cathedral mm. uh, you know in some of the cities sikh community hindu community and others came and mm. you know gave talks and and yeah. we all spoke about how eating together is such a yeah. important thing yeah. And, yeah. Could, and you know we were talking about ghettoization that's beautiful and these like things. you know that yeah. the communities can it come is. together yeah. and, and then, do something yeah like and this. it's just not about breaking a bread together you know yeah. there's much more to it sitting side by side to each other ek dusre se jaan pehchan ek dusre dusre ke sath waqfiyat karni pata lagana ke you know aap kis background se hawala rakhte hain aap kis background se hawala rakhte hain aur phir ek dusre ko apne culture apne background ke hawale se aagahi deni ke taaki ek neutral understanding ho ek mutual respect develop ho ek dusre ke culture ke liye ek dusre ki race ke liye ek dusre ke mazhab ke liye to is qisam ke initiatives jo hain ye betahasha behtar rahenge aur zyada se zyada karne chahiye very important really important and this is the thing i mean our biggest project this year is going to be inshallah the losing my religion conference Ji, uh, which is coming up and for that you know again is to really try to get large numbers of the muslim community hopefully hundreds and not thousands inshallah Bilkul. together yeah. to really discuss islamophobia to discuss uh, living as a muslim in the west mm, you yes. know the challenges Bilkul, and these sort yeah. of things Bilkul, and we've got yeah. people like sheikh yasir qadi from the mm. usa mm. linda sarsour from new york who's mm. a famous mm. muslim activist mm. from yeah. new york mm. and even you know salma yaqub mm. the mm. activist mm. from birmingham mm. Mm. and Sheikh Zahir Mahmood mm. and It's others coming together yeah. a big lineup of lots mm. of people and uh, you know people can learn more about that on mm. on yeah. that on the website it's mm. uh, www.lmrc.uk mm. uh, that's lmrc the letters.uk mm-hmm. um, and that's the type of thing that we try to do mm. small events and big events mm. uh, to get the muslim community to understand about islamophobia how it yeah. affects them and how yeah. they yeah. can challenge yeah. it yeah. 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 and then lots of events with non muslims mm. yeah. we yeah. recently had an event in uh, leicester mm. where we had a uh, uh, interfaith event mm. uh, yeah. we had somebody from the buddhist community we had a hindu speaker mm. we had sikh speaker mm. we had a couple of different christian denominations uh, speaking on the day mm. Uh, mm. and we had uh, molana tokir isak uh, speaking on behalf of the muslim community mm-hmm. and it was a really nice event mm. yeah. um where there was a large crowd it was held in city retreat which is a city center masjid in the middle of uh, uh, Leic- Leicester mm-hmm. and it was again an opportunity for people of different faiths to come together to understand each other mm-hmm. uh, to try to remove some of these misunderstanding and yeah. misgivings because look majority of people are not that yeah, yeah. yeah majority yeah, of people are not islam yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. majority of people don't have an a, gr- a grudge against mm-hmm. yeah but what's happening is that they are being pushed in that direction mm. by these these narratives coming mm, from the yeah. media mm, yeah. coming s- from some politicians mm, yeah. uh you know coming from some campaigners mm. and you know people like Tommy Robinson you know his name is Yaxley Lennon but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know uh, he calls himself Tommy <laughs> Robinson and these people who you know going on the streets demonstrating coming on TV and other things and saying things about Islam and Muslims that are just not true yeah, mm. yeah. so mm. they will take Quranic ayat and take it out of context yeah yeah yeah, yeah that so is what we need to do is as muslims is challenge those narratives yeah. Yeah. meet with the people mm-hmm. tell them who we are yes. show them what mm-hmm. we are yeah. show mm-hmm. them that this is uh, this is us yeah. you know we are human beings like everyone else yeah. yes we will have people amongst our community who commit crimes like yeah. in any community yeah. 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 you know we will have people who do uh, commit an atro- atrocities at times mm. like any community mm. yeah yeah you know mm. uh, magar phir uska khumyaza hame being muslim zyada bhugatna padta hai because agar humne koi kaam galat kiya to wo to phir jo hai wo ek terrorism ka usko label ya title de diya jayega however agar kisi aur ne wahi kaam kiya hai to usko phir aap mental health ke sath associate kar de ہیں حالانکہ کوئی اور ریس بھی وہی یو نو غلط کام کرے گی جو کہ مسلمان نے کر دیا مگر اس کا خمیازہ مسلمان ہمیشہ زیادہ بھگتتے ہیں ایز اپوز ٹو کسی اور ریس کے 
In Sri Lanka, um, a few weeks uh, during Easter, mm -hmm. there was a terrible terrorist atrocity yeah. mm -hmm. where we are told that a number of Muslims uh, b bombed and attacked churches, mm -hmm. and it was terrible, yeah. it was horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was all over the news, yeah. and myself included, we all condemned it yeah. and we said it was wrong, and it, you can't accept innocent loss mm -hmm. of lives ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Since then, there has been uh, nine mosques in uh, Sri Lanka that have been destroyed. Mm, yeah. uh, just yesterday, three Muslims were killed. Mm. Uh, 30 villages attacked. Mm. Large mobs attacking Muslim villages, houses, mosques and stuff. Mm. Did you see it on the news? No. Yeah, it's everywhere. No. It's everywhere. It's and really it wasn't, sad. I didn't and, see and it. It, wasn't, <laughs> really it wasn't on the news to the same extent. You know, the people who are perpetrating that are not being called terrorists. Yeah. 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 The people who are attacking the mosques are not being called terrorists. No. The people who are, you know, the mobs, they might be called mobs, they might be called this, yeah. that, but they're not being called terrorists. Mm -hmm. And why is it that that label is only attached to the, yeah, to the Muslim? To to the the Muslim. Muslim. Yep. So we had the situation in Leicester uh, where Paul Moore, uh, you know, a non-Muslim, uh, white British man, hmm. uh, drove his car around early in the morning, September 2017, mm. and was driving around looking for Muslims to kill. Yeah. Mm. And he attacked a, a Muslim school girl, tried to hit her. Alhamdulillah, she survived and jumped mm. out of the way. And then he saw this sister, Zainab Hussein. Uh, she is a, uh, a mother uh, from Leicester, mm. uh, of Somali origin, uh, who was working full time, was running a charity at the time as mm. well, as mm. a part time, she was running a charity that was helping local women and stuff, a real, you know, asset to the community mm. of Leicester. Um, her one daughter was doing a master's at Leicester University, you know, they were real, you know, this family, the whole family was yeah. an asset to the yeah. community. Now, this Paul Moore, he drove his car, and he drove onto the curb and he hit Zainab Hussain from behind. Mm. And, mm. She, and, and then he drove up the road and turned his car around and came back. And while oh. she was lying on the floor with broken legs and stuff because she couldn't move, he drove over the middle of her body with two oh, wheels. Oh, oh. And, you know, he Definitely broke her pelvis, leg bones, oh, and oh, oh. arms. To this day, she can't sit up. Oh, you know, oh, she's oh. lying back. Oh, and oh, uh, oh. she leaves the house in ambulance and comes back to the house oh, in ambulance. Oh, oh, oh. And it's associated now, with mental health. No, not mental health. Mm. but. Initially, they didn't call it a hate crime. Mm -hmm. For the first 10 or 12 days, it wasn't yeah. reported in the media. It was reported as a collision. Right. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> men got involved, and we spoke to the police, and they, initially, they said to us, okay, we're treating it as a, a hate crime. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And it was prosecuted as a hate crime. Right. Mm -hmm. Attempted right. murder, uh, uh, religi religiously aggravated attempted mm -hmm. murder, so mm -hmm. a hate crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't called in the media once. So we pushed it, and then, alhamdulillah, lots of media reported it after mm -hmm. we did press releases yeah. on it. Yeah. We went and spoke to journalists Very from BBC, important. ITV, mm -hmm. others, and we got a lot of reporting yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Much Very more than otherwise, but it was right. like 10 and 20 and 30 days later, yeah. Yeah. not yeah. on the day of yeah. the yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah. So but it was never called terrorism. Why is that word terrorism? Reserved for when Muslims do things. Yeah, yeah. that's my question to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us and why then did all this We have to the masters in Islamophobia yeah. here. <laughs> I feel like, you know, especially after 9-11, mm. that uh, totally the uh, enemy picture changed because before that it was Soviet Union, but after 9-11, it was always like, you no, know, all the focus was on Muslims and more about like you know, Al Qaeda, terrorism, and then fundamentalism and conservative Muslims, and then you find liberal Muslims. So we got all these different labels. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, so well, this, you're actually giving me some of the talk titles yeah. from, our, <laughs> from our conference. Yeah, that's coming. That's coming up. These are the exact yeah. things that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, yeah. you know, so. moderate Muslim, liberal Muslim. Yeah, yeah. you know, fundamentalist Muslim. Yeah. What, what, what are those what Muslims? Do, what yeah, what yeah. nothing. Yeah. it's just a way of labeling people. We should refuse these labels. Yeah. You you know, we are Muslim. Yeah, we are Muslim. That's it. That's it. And you we know, are like British yeah. Muslims because yeah. m sometimes, like, you no, know, it's more like, you know, as you said, like, you no, know, when our parents mig immigrated to the European countries, it's more like they came here as a guest workers. The intention was to, like, you know, earn money, send back, and return back. But mm. then through family reunion, and the the wives came, the kids came, and then their focus was, okay, we will just send our uh, kids to the madrasa, to the masjid, they will grow up, we will just give them education, mm. that's it. Mm. But we, as a second generation, third or fourth generation, we are like, okay, we are not guest workers. We are British Muslims or European Muslims or Norwegian Muslims. We are born and raised up here. This is our communi uh, community. This is our country. This is our hak to do, like, you know, demand our rights. It's therefore, I feel like there is a 
different between the first generation and second generation because first generation, they were very grateful. They accepted everything. Mm -hmm. And while second generation or third or fourth generation, we are more like we are demanding Roots, things you know, as the asking. other in the community. Mm -hmm. the we are a part of the community. Mm -hmm. And we are not a part of this community uh, as just, you know, people who came in the 60s or the 70s yeah. or the yeah. 80s or the 90s. Look, yeah. <laughs> Islam, Muslims and the Muslim community have a very long history with Britain. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We, it's not that we turned up in 1960 or 1950 or something yeah. like this. There was 300,000 Muslim soldiers who fought with the with the Allies in the Western Front in the First World War. Mm. Yeah. Take yeah. that number in, 300,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah? yeah, Muslim yeah. soldiers yeah. fighting for Britain and France against the Germans. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There was hundreds of thousands of Muslim soldiers who fought for Britain in North Africa, mm. who fought for Britain against the Nazis in Europe, who mm. fought for Britain against the Japanese in mm. Burma and mm. these places, mm. yeah. you know? Mm. Th this is a long history Influx, of, yeah. of, of the Muslim community. Mm. And then when uh, the, uh, after the World War, uh, the Second World War, when uh, lots of British people had died, uh, when uh, Britain was coming back on its feet, when it wanted to establish a national health service, when its factories wanted workers again because so many people had lost their lives in the war, mm. That's when people came here. They didn't, yeah. majority of British Muslims didn't come here as refugees and mm. like this. They were yeah. invited here mm. to become doctors in the mm. NHS, welcome, uh, welcome. to become uh, nurses in the NHS. Now, in my opinion, if you look at the stats, the majority of the NHS is majority of the NHS. There are Muslims in the NHS. So, let me tell you that Islamophobia is the cause of the NHS. We have talked about it. But if we talk about the cures of the NHS, then what do you want to tell us about the NHS? ऊपर टच अपॉन करें तो आप क्या बताना चाहेंगे आईआरयू के हवाले से स्पेशली जो आपका इस्लामोफोबिया रिपोर्टिंग यूनिट है कि अगर कोई विक्टिमाइज होता है तो फर्स्ट पॉइंट ऑफ कांटेक्ट क्या होना चाहिए एक तो वो चीज़ और दूसरा ये भी आ, समझने की बात है कि जब इस्लामोफोबिया होता है आप उसको कैसे डिफाइन करेंगे कि ये इस्लामोफोबिया के ज़मरे में फॉल इन करता है कि नहीं करता उस कैटेगरी में फॉल इन करता है कि नहीं करता बिकॉज इट्स बेस्ड ऑन इंटेंशन इज इट और वो फिर मेरे ख्याल में लीगली एक फ्रेमवर्क में कवर्ड भी नहीं है so uh, th with Islamophobia, there is a number of cures. Mm -hmm. Number one, mm -hmm. this is this mm -hmm. important one, mm -hmm. IRU. Mm -hmm. Not just IRU, but reporting full stop. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have Islamophobic abuse, I, I, I give talks across the country, mm -hmm. I give them all over the East Midlands especially. Whenever I give a talk, sometimes 50 Muslims, 100, 200, 500 Muslims sitting in front of me, I always ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any type of Islamophobic attack against you? Did someone spit at you, hit you, swear at you, mm -hmm. pull your hijab? Any of these mm -hmm. type of mm -hmm. Islamophobic attacks? Mm -hmm. And normally about, if it's women, about 70% put their hand up. If mm -hmm. it's mixed audience, maybe sort of 30, 40, 50% put their hand mm -hmm. up. Sometimes, like I did a talk to a group of school children and everybody put their hand up. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I was just in, wow. in, Bur in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. wow. That's Would you shocking. believe, yeah, in mm -hmm. Birmingham. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was on, uh, in, in Sheldon, mm -hmm. um, which is majority non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. Now, then I asked the second question. Leave, keep your hand up, I said. Now I said, keep your, let your hand remain up if you reported it to the police. Everybody puts their hand yeah. up. Yeah. 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 One, two sometimes. Yeah. You know? My anecdotal own evidence from that continuous asking the same question is that mm. people just don't report. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And this is the thing. Number one, report it. Mm. Yeah. You may say, oh, the police won't do anything about it. This is not going to be, you know, it's, not, it's, 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 it's just going to be ignored. Look, yeah. firstly, the police will do something about it, inshallah, and we have to hope and, 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 and push Welcome. and make sure mm. that they do when we, when we chase them and we push them and we talk to them and mm. we make sure. Mm. Even if they don't, mm -hmm. even if they can't find the perpetrator, mm -hmm. even if nothing can be done, mm -hmm. it adds to the statistics. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that people know the the, the level of Islamophobia it's and, increasing. Uh, is increasing. And because police forces are now reporting Islamophobia mm. as a separate hate crime consistently mm. Mm. since yeah. 2015, mm. we yeah. are now getting non-consistent figures of Islamophobia. Mm. So, for example, mm. since 2011, it's gone up by over 400%. Wow. Mm. You know? That's it, huge. It, last year, uh, last three years in a row, hate crime has gone up in excess of 30%. Mm. Yeah, people this are reporting it more. Mm. Yeah, mm. Mm. Not just reporting, no. but because... Mm. It's happening it's more, happening I more. So in, for example, in this last year, there was a 40% increase mm. in, in hate mm. crime. And of, of hate crime, which is religiously motivated, 52% mm. is against Muslims. Mm. Mm. So we make up 
about 4.4% of the population. Mm. So less than 5%. Mm. Yeah. Yet 52% of religiously motivated hate crime is against Muslims. Yeah. So so the the rest of it, 48%, less than half, is against all other religions. Mm. Hindus, yeah. Sikhs, Jews, Christians, yeah. mm. everybody. Yeah. 48% and 52% just against Muslims. Mm. Mm. Wow. So the, That's a huge it's reason. It's huge. And mm. the thing is, sometimes if you look at the media and, so, and the way they, they report, you would think that other types of religiously motivated hate crimes are the main problem in yeah. society. Mm. Yeah. But it's actually the biggest religiously motivated mm. hate crime, according to the police and the home office, yeah. not according to us or other Muslim yeah. organizations, is Islamophobia. Mm. Yeah. And it yeah. is a serious, serious problem and mm. a growing problem in society, and mm. we need to yeah. deal with it. So number one, report it. Yeah. Yeah. Always report. Mm. Yeah. No matter how minor, however you feel that you was, you were strong and you dealt with it and stuff, report it. Mm -hmm. You know, you must report again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. One, report yeah. to the police. Secondly, report to us. So we have something called the Islamophobia Response Unit mm -hmm. within MEND. Mm -hmm. Our website is mend.org.uk. You can go on there. You mm -hmm. can find the Islamophobia Response Unit. Mm -hmm. And you can report directly to the Islamophobia yeah. Response yeah. Unit. There is a phone number and there is also the, the website. Mm -hmm. So go on there, mm -hmm. report to them as well. And mm -hmm. what will happen is the Islamophobia Response Unit, if it's a hate crime, mm -hmm. they will help you with the police chase, chase up, take the police log, make sure it's being taken seriously mm -hmm. and these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. If it's not a hate crime and it's discrimination, like you might have been discriminated against work, at school mm -hmm. or something like this, mm -hmm. then what we'll do is we will try to take up your case uh, to... Uh, to try to get you compensation mm. or to get reinstatement and these things. So recently we had like eight or nine thousand pound compensation for a number of women who were mm. discriminated against, mm. um, you know, in the in the workplace and these mm. sort of things. So, mm. so those are important. Mm. Number one, reporting. Mm. Number two is that we need to, as a community, start involving ourselves more Absolutely. in the places where decisions are made. Mm. Right. Yeah. 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 People Policy are currently making, deciding yes. for us. Yeah. We are more like no, mm. no. Yeah. So <laughs> why aren't more Muslims involved in politics. Mm. Yeah. And mm. Sometimes we look at l a few Muslim councillors in our area and we think, oh, yeah, we're all very politically aware. Actually, we're not. Yeah. You know, according to our percentage in the population, we should have 32 Muslim MPs. Belkan. Yeah, Belkan. We have 15 Muslim MPs. We are more interested in the politics in Pakistan yeah. rather than here. I mean, you sit on the cup and you can watch the news comfortably and you can watch the news and awareness and create a different thing as opposed to that you can participate in the policy making and decision making. So, that's why our Muslim people have a perspective and a perspective that will be included. It's definitely the case. I mean, if we don't talk about our own perspective, से बात नहीं करेंगे अपने बेनिफिट की तो फिर कोई और हमारे लिए क्यों परवाह करेगा सो वी शुड हैव एटलीस्ट 32 मुस्लिम एमपी लाइक आई सेड वी हैव 50 वी शुड हैव वी शुड हैव सो मेनी मोर मुस्लिम लॉर्ड्स इन द हाउस ऑफ लॉर्ड्स लॉर्ड्स एंड लेडीज वी शुड हैव मोर मुस्लिम काउंसलर्स and then on top of that, the media. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody, you know, when the children go to school and mm -hmm. university, they want them to become doctors. Yeah. Doctors or lawyers or engineers. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe engineers yeah. sometimes, you know, if they fail the medicine we, exams. We yeah. call it Ali. <laughs> but they want them to become Ali. In Pakistan, it's like that you have to become a doctor or an engineer. If a girl is specifically, you have to be a little bit free, or you have to be a little bit more, you have to become a doctor, because you will get a work-life balance. And this is a respectable pressure. No, there's no work life balance yeah. for a doctor. But in Pakistan, if you have a mindset, a a a engineering. But the thing, I I want to say, the thing I wanted yeah. to say on this is, but no, why don't you push them to go into the media? Hmm. Yeah. That media that tells lies about you all day, hmm. yeah. if you have Muslim hmm. editors in hmm. the editorial room, hmm. yeah. if you have Muslim uh, producers in the TV studios, mm -hmm. if you have Muslim uh, pr uh, presenters on the TV front, mm -hmm. you know when, yeah. that, when, that, when that newsroom sits down mm -hmm. to make the decision about its mm -hmm. news for the day, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and somebody, somebody, somebody picks up some lie about Muslims and says, mm -hmm. we're going to tell this, mm -hmm. that Muslim in the newsroom before it ever becomes news, can say, actually, that's a lie. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's yeah. not true. We need to step yeah. up. And that's step not my religion. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So and you know, I um, feel like it's therefore it's so important that we also create this awareness among the parents mm. because if unki zehniyat ye hai ki chalo doctor banna hai, lawyer banna hai, ya phir um, uh, engineer mein jana hai, mm. to hume ye awareness create karne chahiye ki we should go in every field because har jagah hume Muslimano ki zaroorat hai. Civil, civil, civil hai. service. Bilkul. We talked about Bilkul, politics. Yeah, only yeah. only only on twenty thirty people chalo MPs ban jayenge. Yeah. We, we need that. It's important. Yeah. Mm. But you know the the one MP 
How many civil servants are working with him? One minister, how many yeah. civil servants are working yeah. with him? Yeah. Why are we not going into civil service? Yeah. Local civil service working in the council as council officers yeah. Yeah. and also nationally going into the civil service. Yeah. Really yeah. important. Yeah. important. Yeah. You know, you were talking is it about is it dar professions yeah. or like this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these are very prestigious professions. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. pay, yeah. prestige, honor, all these things, yeah, yeah. yeah. and influence. But then with that, if it goes to all the professions, it will also empower us. Then who will take care of it? Our women will go out of our hands. That's why it's important to be empowered. Take care of them, take care of them, take care of them, and that's how uh, far we can go culturally. But yeah, no, thank you very much, yeah. uh, Azhar uh, to come on board and share such valuable information, you know, uh, regarding so Islamophobia and the concept, yeah. So, uh, Nazreen, as you said, Azhar has discussed with you, that the IIU is the IIU department. If you are a victim of an Islamophobic attack, or if you know someone who is in the past or currently a victim of Islamophobia, please contact the IIU unit. Contact KJ, Wahape Apko, uh, Betreen support Milegi, and it's all free of cost. And I think Apke Pass advisors be legal advisors Mojude, Joki Apko advice Keringe, Apka Joy specific um, action Apke uh, against Lia Gaya, Jo attack Hua, Hiki Zemreke, and the Johevo Shamar Gia Jaiga, hate crime hack, discrimination, hack, Islamophobia, and then they'll take it forward from there. So, hmm. um, Amreen um, Ajka program Kajasa of Janti, Kavak Hatam Hua Jata, hai. Okay. Mere Halme Hamne Johaj Zabardaskisim Ka program. हम अपने नाज़रीन को दिया है बहुत बेहतरीन इंफॉर्मेशन आपने हज़र भाई शेयर की सबके साथ तो इन्शाल्लाह नाज़रीन आपके साथ फिर अगले हफ्ते सेम टाइम मौजूद होंगे मैं और अमरीन सहेली के सेट पे तब तक के लिए अल्लाह हाफ़िज